Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Maria. If you've watched this video and you enjoy it, don't be shy, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for any future videos on narcissistic abuse recovery and complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Today we're gonna get into a video where we're gonna talk about what healing looks like and what is this concept of fake healing? What to look out for um, when you're inviting people into your life? So I just want to be open and honest with you on my channel at all times. Uh, I haven't put out a video in a while because I want to make sure that whatever content it is that I am putting out there on this YouTube channel, it's something that I'm really passionate about. And it's, you know, honestly, I've taken a while to figure out what it is I want to talk about next. But something has had this reoccurring theme lately in my life, and I've been noticing it a lot. Uh, whether it be on social media, in real life situations, um, just in TV in general, it's this idea of fake healing. And I want to talk about that a little bit further with you because I think that it's important to be able to recognize what this is so that you can avoid having long term or, you know, any sort of relationship with somebody who's involved in something like this. So before I get into this concept of what I'm calling fake healing, I want to talk about what healing would look like if you're somebody that grew up with narcissistic parents, if you're the child of triangulation, if you're the scapegoat child or the invisible child, or you used to be the golden child, now you are the scapegoat child, or maybe you were in a narcissistic uh, relationship, a narcissistic marriage, a narcissistic friendship. Well, this probably stemmed from beliefs that you had about yourself when you were a child because you possibly came from a, a toxic or chaotic or narcissistic family environment. You believed certain things or ideas about yourself and you carried them into your adulthood. You got into relationships and friendships with people that mirrored the people that you grew up with. So uh, when we take a look at the healing process of narcissistic abuse, you may be somebody that has been diagnosed or self-diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder. So you have that vicious inner critic, you have toxic shame, you have social anxiety, you might be a people pleaser, you self-abandon, right? So you've spotted these things inside of you and you decide that there's something that you have to do about it. You're sick of being in these, you know, attracting narcissists and being in these toxic relationships and uh, it's time for a change in your life. So you decide you're going to go on a healing journey. Well, when you go on an actual healing journey, it kind of feels uh, like you're turning yourself inside out. You're going to feel worse before you feel better. And that's because you're uncovering all of those things that happened to you in childhood. And you're taking a look at, is this a part of, did I attach these beliefs that somebody either verbally said about me or made me think about myself? Did I attach these things to my identity? And who am I really? It's about taking off all of those false beliefs, those false stories you've been telling yourself, the false narratives you've been telling yourself and coming down to your core self, your true self, your, your core identity. And from there, being able to build relationships in your life. So the healing process is going to um, force you to look at what wounds you developed in childhood that you may, may still have, whether it's the wound of embarrassment, the wound of shame, the wound of abandonment. Maybe this means that every time you get into a relationship, you feel like the other person is going to leave you. Maybe you are a people pleaser. You feel like everything is your fault. You're ashamed of yourself. You're ashamed to show people who you really are because they might leave you. They might not like you. These thought patterns come from wounds that started in our childhood and they live inside of us. 
in order to go through a true healing journey, you have to get in touch with those wounds. You have to feel those wounds. You have to know where those wounds came from, why they exist in the first place. You have to dissect them. This is why it feels so bad before it feels better. You have to feel the pain. You have to get comfortable in the uncomfortable. And then you have to process it. You have to tell yourself what is the true, what is the tr the truth about myself? Because we have these false thoughts about ourselves. We need to figure out what is the true self uh, thought about ourselves. We need to incorporate things in our lives that bring us joy. Um, all of these things that we work out, this is a process. It takes a long time, but the thing it takes is self-reflection. A true healing process means that you are able to self-reflect. You're able to look inside, figure out what is going on inside of you. Where are these wounds coming from? Where are these toxic traits coming from? Because we are responsible for our own healing. Whether or not someone did something to us or not, we are responsible for healing that. We are generational curse breakers, okay? So it's important to be able to self-reflect. Without self-reflection, you are not able to truly heal from these things. Anything else would just be a cover-up. So like I said, when you go through a healing journey, you are, you are self-reflecting. A healing journey is something that you are doing internally, okay? You may be doing external things and have tools in your pocket like journaling and um, meditation and mindfulness and, you know, all the practice of being present. There may be other things you're doing, but the healing process is something of self-reflection, so when you self-reflect and you dissect these things and you figure out where these wounds come from and you feel and you process and you move these emotions through your body, you are someone who is able then to be vulnerable with yourself and with others. When you have gone through that much pain of the healing journey, you are now someone who is able to be vulnerable. You are able to share things. You understand emotions. You understand feelings. You understand pain. You understand that connection that you can have with other people. Um, the self-reflection is what allows you to understand the vulnerability. Now I want to get into what this fake healing process looks like. So I will start off by saying the easiest way for us to understand that someone uh, may be on a fake healing process or, you know, has n is not able to self-reflect or these types of things is this is someone who is not able to be vulnerable, okay? So vulnerability is one of the key aspects in building deep relationships. Without being able to be vulnerable, we will never truly know who a person is. If you've ever met someone that your relationships with or, um, you know, conversations with are completely surface level, which you all know someone, um, this is someone that is not able to be vulnerable. And if you think about the level of vulnerability it takes to go through a real healing process, then you understand the value that you hold in a relationship or a friendship. It takes a lot to be vulnerable with yourself and to go through these things. So after you go through your healing journey and you have relationships in your life where you see that these are, you know, more surface level and that people are not being vulnerable with you. They are not sharing information with you. They are not um, telling you about things that they're struggling with. Um, and it's kind of like a Instagram or a Facebook highlight reel of their life, it's just a very surface level, then I would advise you to be careful forming deep, you know, 
giving too much of your time or investing too much into these relationships. A sign of somebody who has been on a fake healing journey or something of the sort would be the fact that they are not able to be vulnerable. They are very surface level. A real healing journey forces you to be vulnerable. So when you've seen that, you can see in other people the, the parts of them that are not healed, right? Because you had those parts too, but you self-reflected and you were vulnerable with yourself and you healed them. So now when you're getting into these friendships with other people or friendships you've had in your past and, and you just kind of get to that point where you're like, you know, these people are not able to be vulnerable. They are not able to share these things, but they are people who are claiming to have been in a healing journey or um, things like um, quotes about healing and positive affirmations and, and all of these types of things. Goal setting and that kind of thing right? These are, this is a fake healing journey. So when you have people who say, um, I'm on a healing journey, I'm go, I'm taking a Ashkawanda or whatever that is, or I'm, um, going to a crystal shop and I'm buying crystals for clarity or, um, strength or, uh, empowerment or any of these things. These are all extremely external things that people are doing. It has become so new age. Healing journeys have become so new age to think that all you have to do is say a few positive affirmations to yourself and set some goals for yourself and call it a healing journey. That is not a healing journey. Your relationships in your life will be completely surface level which means that they will not be deep, they will not be meaningful, they will not be fulfilling, but to you, to the, the other person, the surface level person that does not get vulnerable, that might be all they want, that might be all they need. But when you are someone who has been through a real healing journey, you self-reflect and you are vulnerable, you will never be satisfied with these surface level relationships, because what do these relationships remind you of? They remind you of the relationships that you have with your family. If you are someone that comes from a narcissistic, triangulation, family dynamic, uh, emotionally unavailable, this is the same type of emotional, uh, emotionally unavailable, uh, relationship in your life, it's mirroring what you used to have. If you self-reflect and you um, go through a real journey, it is going to be very difficult to find, um, I'm sorry, it's not going to be difficult to find good friends. It's going to be difficult to tolerate surface level friendships uh, with people that are not able to be vulnerable because you'll be able to see that this is not a true healing journey. Words of affirmation being said to you every day might boost your ego, but a healing journey teaches you unconditional love and the lack of ego. So if you are in these types of dynamics with people, love relationships, friendships, just understand that that uncomfortable feeling that you have inside of you where you're kind of confused as to where that person is in the relationship it's because you've gone through a real healing journey and they obviously have not. It comes down to a level of vulnerability. Vulnerability adds depth in relationships. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, don't be shy. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for any future videos on narcissistic abuse recovery and complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And as always, I wish you all the love in the whole world.